Hi again, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to focus on how we actually build a Power App from within Teams using Power Apps for Teams. So stay tuned. While creating a Power App within a Teams environment is new, hosting Power Apps within Teams has been around for a long time. So how is it different? Well, normally we create a Power App at make.powerapps.com, and then we just add a Power App to a regular Team channel. What we're going to show today in today's short video is how our data can originate in Teams using Dataverse. So all of our data will be within a Teams site. Right now, the, the middle ground is when you want to create a small application included in your Office description, you have to use SharePoint, for example, to use the free version of, of Power Apps. Now, however, in this case, if you want to host your data within Teams, if you have a, a, a Teams license today, you can actually host a two gig database of up to a million records in that list inside of a given team site. So let's see how we can create a quick application to do just that. So first of all, when you go to your team site, I happen to be at teams.microsoft.com. You can also do this within the main uh, Teams application. I'm going to go over here and I'll go ahead and search for Power Apps. All right. Now this is pretty pretty brand new now at this point. This came out in December of 2020, uh, and really is is they're constantly iterating this right now and improving this. So if I add the Power App app, there we go. It will then prompt you at that point to actually add the application. I've already done it in my case, so no worries in my case. Then I'll right click and I'll pin this so it's always available to me. Then I can go ahead and say, let's go ahead and create a brand new application. But before I do that, notice there's a whole slew of, of, of sample applications already available to you that are really, really good. But if I hit new app here, it will ask me what team site do I want to append this to. Okay, so let's go ahead and search for, uh, let's see here, I think it's Office. There we go. Okay, this one happens to already have a Dataverse database in it. So what, in this example, it will be very, very fast. But in your example, when you're creating a brand new, uh, a brand new uh, a Power App within a team site that has not had Dataverse installed, it will take about five minutes to install that Dataverse database or so. Okay, so just a quick heads up. Uh, once you hit create, it will send you an email once it's complete creating this. Now you get a certain amount of, of, of space, two gigs of space per team, and up to a certain amount of rows, up to a million rows per table. So a few things to note here. I'm going to create one just to store my contracts in my case. And I'll hit save. Okay. Now we'll actually create the table and everything we want from within this application. Now, there's other ways of seeing this as well, and I'll show you those in just a few moments here. But a few uh, little general rules that I, I see sometimes apply to this. When I create my table, you want to create whatever table is going to show up on the left here first. Okay. Now, alternatively now, you could save your application, leave it, create all the tables that you want in a different screen. I'll show you what the different screen is in a moment, and then come back to it as well. So I'm going to hit Create Table. I'll go ahead and call this just Contract. I'll use a singular version of it. And you can also go ahead and, and you'll see the plural version right below it. When I hit create, if you've done a Dataverse table before, this is going to be a little bit similar to what you're used to. Now, the screen I'm going to show you after this is going to be very, very similar. However, this one has a little bit of, a little more like SharePoint than it is uh, Dataverse. So I can go ahead and give us a better name. Let's go ahead and call this uh, contract name. Just going to keep it simple. And you'll see it kind of resembles SharePoint, where as I add columns by hitting the little plus button right here, I can actually add data right underneath it as well. So this is my primary column here, not my primary key necessarily, but my primary column. Then I'll go ahead and create a contract value. That will be, I know this is a, pair, a, pair, a limited list of columns right now here. However, we can go to a different screen and get the full array of columns almost. Okay, so I'll make this just a, say for example, my currency is gone here. So I have to make it a decimal column to make, to do, if I want to use it here. Later, we can actually, I'll show you where we can actually make that a, a, a currency column if we were creating this column from scratch. Okay, then I'll go ahead and create uh, maybe one more column here. I'll call this just contract type. 
and I'll make this a choice column. Okay, and I'll say um, uh, lease contractor maybe, and I'll call the last one um, goods, something like that. All right, and you can also color code these if you wish, make different ones for, again, this resembles very close to what you can do in SharePoint. The biggest difference is you get a lot more rows here, and a lot of the delegation problems you can have in SharePoint go away as well. So reasonably, I'm done here. I'll call this new Jacksonville lease. The contract value will be you know, $40. We don't have a very good lease. And when I double click on these, I can actually add my lease there as well. And I'll add one more as well. Uh, you know, Brian's new car. And that'll be $40,000. <laughs> and when I double click on that, I'll call that uh, lease also. All right, here we go. And we'll hit close. Now we can always add more columns later. But a few, few things to note here. Notice I went ahead and built the application for me on the right side. So my app at this point is essentially done. I can now save it, publish it, and it's now ready. But look, let's take a little preview of this application. Of course, it's, it's pointing to things like pictures that don't exist. So I'll select this left gallery and I'll change it from image title and subtitle to title and subtitle. That will get rid of that. We can also, of course, do things like um, put uh, format that as a currency. A whole bunch of ways. I prefer the text column way of doing this, but I'll just do this for the time being. Just keep it lazy. Let's add a little dollar sign. And uh, Now, the rule of thumb here is make sure you pick the first row in the gallery. The second row picks the whole gallery. Okay. Now, after we do that, we're reasonably done. I can hit play. I can add a new contract. There we go. Hit new record. And I'll call this uh, Brian's new, new uh, I don't know, house, whatever. That will be $200. That will also be a lease. Hit the checkbox. Now that record's now added also. So again, really, really simple way of building an application in just a few minutes. Now let's take a look behind the scenes at what's happening here. We, of course, would want to change this and change the colors. We can just select these uh, and go and, and select each of these color blocks here and make it make kind of our own here. A few things to note. See the icons right there? They're really light. Make sure you change those colors also because we have light colors on light colors. There's also going to be colors behind that, like this little cancel button and all that. So what I'm doing to get around here is I'm hitting the, um, I'm hitting the Alt key to click on the pencil, and you'll see it, then it kind of gives me the opportunity to see the other icons. So it's built the entire app for us, but there's a whole lot of things we may want to change, like the hover, hover colors here, for example. All those can be changed very easily in this little properties pane on the right. If you're used to Power Apps, you'll notice your, your, uh, your insert ribbon is gone up top. This has all been replaced with the plus button over here where you can search for items on the left side. And there are some other differences, like, uh, like with labels, for example. They've, 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 um, they have different properties here. If I throw, if I throw a label in here, uh, you'll see those have changed a little bit. But all in all, it's, it's uh, largely the same stuff. So with that now done, we can, of course, make our changes and, and pretty this up. But just for brevity's sake here, I'm going to save this application. I'm then going to publish this app, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like behind the scenes also. Hit next. I'll point to which team's channel I want to embed this into. There we go. I'll use the general tab here in this case. There's my contract app. I'll hit save and close. And I believe this was called Office Brian or something like that. So now if I go over to my teams, look for my Office Brian somewhere here on the right. Let me get rid of my, my face here so I can, you guys don't see me zooming in closer with my, my bad eyes here. There, I think it's Office Brian. There we go. And now that we've done that, we'll see, it looks like uh, I can go over to contracts and there it is. There's our contract application. Not a very pretty application yet because we've only spent 30 seconds actually improving it now. But to show you a more flushed out one, one of the examples is the Manage Ideas one. This allows you to build out a process improvement application where I want to improve the cafe food. And you'll see we can, have, we can actually add our own ideas. Uh, there we go. We're going to put whatever description we want. And as we do this, as we hit Submit, it's going to now add that idea where people can th give it thumbs up and so on. Additionally, because we are integrated with Teams, you'll notice as soon as I posted that idea, it shows up under post, more cowbell. Okay, so one of the nice things, nice things we can do there. Additionally, let me show you one more thing here. As I go into Power Apps here, behind the scenes, what's happening? 
if you want to see all the tables and kind of structure it the way. By the way, if you ever get this where it spins, this is why I go to the teams.microsoft, I'll just hit the refresh button, it'll come in a few seconds here. That's a current, you know, this is V1, of course, so we get some little weirdness like that sometimes. That's why I always go to the website instead of going to the fat client. So, now that we've done that, we can go over to, uh, you'll see recent apps, and there's our idea app I just showed you down below. And if I hit see more right there, I can point to my team, the same team we were just pointing to, I'll then hit see all. Now that you've done that, check this out. Here's a listing of all the tables, all the Canvas apps, uh, any kind of connections I'm using, the chatbots I'm using, the flows I'm using, all that stuff is now built into this. So if I want to find that contract table that we just messed with, there we go. There's my contract table right there. Oh, I've printed two of them now at this point, it looks like. I'll pick the one we just selected. You can edit the data right here to get back to the other view. That looks like this. This is the same view you just saw a moment ago where I can kind of edit the data like that. But if you want a more advanced view, you can also just go to edit. And when you go to edit, this is gonna look just like the data verse you have today, where you can add columns, point to lookup tables and all that, and now you're getting the full reference of all the tables you have access to inside of Power Apps, including currency columns and all those kind of things. You can also use this area by the way to manage permissions. This is spectacular. I can hit manage permissions right here on this table and say what kind of rights do you get as a member of this, of this group, of this uh, team channel here where I can say, yep, you're only allowed to create records, and then you can read and write, you can read your own records and update your own records. So you can specify exactly what kind of rights every user gets in this case. Uh, additionally, inside of here, you'll be able to do things under settings, uh, and add extra metadata, you can do, so the full team stuff is not available to you here, as you can see, like no attachments and those kind of things. But some of the metadata pieces are available to you, like quick create forms and views and form and views right here as well. Now, the last thing to note here is as you create this, if you ever go above a million rows and you want to upgrade this, you can absolutely do that in the admin center. And I'll have follow on videos about how we do those kind of things. If you choose to upgrade it, it will no longer consume your team space. It will inst instead consume your, your space inside of your main Dataverse for that environment. Okay? Well, for your tenant, excuse me. So with that now done, we are ready to go ahead and, and oh, one more thing also, you'll notice that if I go back to the uh, my all here, you can actually select certain areas here and export that out to another in Teams environment if you want to. So if you have a, a subsidiary you're supporting, you can uh, build it for one subsidiary, export it out, and then deploy it to other subsidiaries if you wanted to as well. That will include all the apps, uh, any, kind of, uh, any kind of flows that you want, any kind of connections, uh, any kind of tables. Now, we're using Dataverse as our connection, but we can connect to anything. Now, if you connect to a premium data source, you'll of course need a license for that. But everything I did here, just, I just needed a Teams license to make that real. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please do subscribe to our videos so you can find out when we do more Power Apps videos. We try to do one a week. Uh, additionally, we have this in things like our boot camp at Pragmatic Works. You can find our boot camps at pragmaticworks.com. We have a whole bunch of free classes there. We also have some paid classes as well. And we also do things like hackathons and virtual mentoring where we can teach you how to, how to build apps with your own data instead of my data. All right, thank you so much for watching us today. Have a great day.